Hey everyone, Anthony here from Armstrong Bird Food. I hope you're all doing well. Today we are at Long Point Bird Observatory here in Southern Ontario. This is an amazing place for all things birding. Now founded in 1960, Long Point Bird Observatory is the oldest bird research center in North America. And it is also part of Birds Canada, which is Canada's leading organization for bird science and conservation. So today we're gonna go through the park, we're gonna take some pictures, and I'm gonna give you tips and tricks to get your bird photography up to that next level. All right, let's get going. The first thing to consider with your camera is your focal length. When shooting birds, it's important to keep them at a safe distance, both not to startle them in their home, but also for the candidness of your photos. With that in mind, you'll want a lens that can reach around 400 to 450 millimeters or 300 millimeters on an APS-C camera like the Fujifilm system I'm using here. But within reason, the longer the focal length, the better. And in my experience, something like a 100 to 600 millimeter zoom lens gives the absolute perfect range for bird photography. The next important thing to consider would be your aperture and your shutter speed. Before we continue, I recommend setting your camera to manual with auto ISO. This will allow you to adjust your shutter speed as needed, your aperture to stay at its widest, and your ISO to compensate for the shift in exposure on the fly. In almost all cases, you'll want your aperture as wide as possible. The wider the aperture, or the smaller the F number, the brighter the photo, and the shallower your focus, or the blurrier the background will be. This is crucial because with birds, you typically want a very high shutter speed, and the higher your shutter speed is, the darker your image is going to be. And you want raising your ISO to be your last resort as this can introduce noise. When shooting birds, you want your shutter speed to be between 1 800th and around 1 4,000th of a second, depending on the size of the bird and whether or not they're moving. A rule of thumb is the smaller the bird, the faster their wings move, and therefore the faster the shutter speed. While filming this, I came across a photographer named Terry, and he's gonna add some of his own advice for a budding bird photographer. My name is Terry Vanderar, and I just love wildlife and shooting birds, animals, anything that has two or four legs. The botanical gardens are really good for birds. This place here, the Bird Observatory at Long Point, is, is a good place to get close to birds. And then you can start using your senses. You, you don't only look for them, but you listen for them and uh, pick up some bird books and learn about identification. I, I find in the morning, morning is the best time that's when they start to get active start feeding and especially in photography you'd want the morning light as opposed to later on like this time of day midday you got harsh sunlight yeah. casting a lot of shadows and uh, it, it's tough to shoot as a photographer that time of day they always talk about the golden hour which is like an hour after sunrise and if it's a little bit overcast and you have some filtered light you can shoot for most of the morning before it gets too harsh i, I prefer to have the light behind me when possible and my if I'm shooting a bird and I see it in my viewfinder I don't see that glint in the eye I don't shoot to me to me when I see just a black eye it just doesn't it takes away from the photo you want to see that glint in the eye that brings that photo to life you want to, you want to focus on on the head of the bird as much as possible like if, if you can get the eyes and the head in sharp focus if the rest of the bird is not in focus it's not as important but if, if the head and the eyes are are blurry, it just takes away from your shot. It's like shooting your pets, right? If you're gonna shoot your dog or your cat. If the eyes or the head are blurry, the whole shot is no good, but if you can get the eyes sharp and the rest of the body is out of focus, it doesn't seem to matter because your eyes focus on, on that part of it. And when you're shooting with like telephoto lenses, your depth of field is a lot shallower. So sometimes you're close that you can't get that whole bird in focus. So if you're gonna get any of it in focus, make sure that head is what your focal point is. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Oh, thank you. It. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is autofocus. So autofocus is incredibly important. As you can see, it's tracking me as I move about the frame and keeping me in focus. But unlike me, birds are very fast. So you want to make sure that your camera is just as fast. Now, there are three settings I think are the most important to set correctly for bird photography. First one, make sure your camera is set to autofocus continuous or AI servo if you're using a Canon camera. Essentially, this means if you're shooting a burst of photos, as you're shooting those photos, that camera is going to continuously adjust focus as you and that bird move. Otherwise, the camera will just find one focus spot and keep it there even if the bird decides to move. Not ideal. Now the next two settings are autofocus speed and tracking sensitivity. First, autofocus speed. Like I said, birds move very fast. Your camera needs to move fast. It's as simple as that. As far as I'm concerned, keep your autofocus speed as high as it can go. One thing to consider with your autofocus speed that fast, usually when your camera's calculating focus, any little doubts it might have, it'll correct that before it actually has time to act on it. But with your autofocus speed set to its maximum, a few of those little doubts might creep through and you might have a couple that are out of focus. Not a big deal. As long as the majority of your photos are in focus, that's what you're looking for. Now the last setting is tracking sensitivity. You want to make sure that your camera is locked onto that bird at all times, even if that bird decides to fly off out of nowhere. 
If your tracking sensitivity is low and that bird decides to jump out in a split second, your camera might decide, hey, now we're focusing on the tree. Not what you want, you want the bird, set that tracking sensitivity to its maximum. Now another bonus feature is a lot of these modern cameras actually have the ability to identify birds on their own and that can really help with focus tracking. Prior to that you'd have to use object tracking and you'd set the object on the bird and it would just track it as it moves around the frame. But with bird detection if that camera loses focus for a second it's going to just look for a bird again it's not going to focus on what's behind it. Super useful. Double check before you go out if your camera has that feature and if it does make sure it's enabled. It'll help you a lot. Now the last thing I want to talk about is composition. So I've saved composition for last because it's ultimately one of the most important elements of any photography, uh, but it's also one of the most misunderstood, and especially with younger photographers and especially within bird and wildlife photography. Uh, and I think the reason for that is it can be really easy to preoccupy yourself with just getting the animal in frame, and it's easy to let the surroundings go by the wayside. However, I'm here to tell you that you can use some of the tools you've learned from other types of photography like rule of thirds, leading lines, golden ratio, in your bird photography as well and it'll help create a little bit more compelling of a photograph if your bird is in an otherwise hard to photograph location. Now it can be really tempting to just photograph your bird, center compose it in the middle of the image and blur the background out completely and that's totally valid, I do that as well. However, sometimes that bird might be a little bit too far away from you and a little bit too close to its background to have a blurry background and in those cases it's really useful to take inventory of what's around the bird and use that to your advantage. My favorite way to do this is with framing. So for example, if you have a bird in a clearing, it's covered by a lot of branches and moss and leaves, use that to your advantage and create a bit of a frame around the bird. Maybe move your body a little bit and recompose so the bird is not in the middle of the frame. Maybe it's off to a rule of third line and those branches are framing that bird in nicely. It's gonna create a little bit more story and it's gonna make that photo just a little bit more interesting for the viewer. But ultimately, I recommend experimenting. There are lots of different ways to use your environment to take your photo from a snapshot to a story. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a pleasure for me to make, and it was a joy for me to be able to share some of my knowledge with you. If you have any questions at all, please drop them down in a comment, a private message, email. We'll make sure to answer them. And if you guys wanna see a more in-depth bird photography video, let us know that as well. I'm also going to be making a follow-up video on editing bird photography, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, everyone, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you in the next one.